Hello, today I'm going to show you how you can create this drag and drop a Kanban style task board where you can take one task and drag it over to the other columns. Hovering over a card makes the pointer grab hand and when you click and drag the card you can hover it over columns and the column shows you here you can drop it and if you drop the cards it will move to this column. So we're going to code this up, show you how you can create Svelte actions to encapsulate the drag and drop action. So I already created a basic template for this Kanban board. The link is going to be in the description, so you can follow along if you want. Let's show you how it's built up. Let's first start with the data. We return some data here in our load function. We have some columns in an array where we just describe the label and the ID. And then we have some cards and each card has a title, an ID and a column. So the cards decide which column they belong to. Then inside the Svelte file, we iterate over each of the columns. We also grab each card that fits to this column using this filter function, where we just compare the column and the column ID. Then we also display each card iterating over it, and then just displaying the title of the card. For the styles, what is important is we're using flex just in the normal row orientation. And then for the cards, we flip the orientation, we just put them in columns so the cards get put under each other. We got this down, and then we can move to the next part where we define the actions for the drag and drop. So basically, what we're gonna need is Svelte actions. So basically what a Svelte action is, is an element level lifecycle function. So it's just a function that takes in a node, and we can do whatever we want with this node with the native DOM APIs from JavaScript, and we can return some stuff like the destroy function, we can clean up stuff here. So we're gonna define our actions now. We're gonna create a new file, let's call it dnd.js for drag and drop. And here we're gonna define a first action, which is gonna be the draggable. Export function draggable. And it's gonna take in a node and also some data. All right, first we're gonna save the data for later. And then we're gonna do stuff to the node. So first we're gonna say that this node is draggable. All right, so this uh, says the browser, okay, this item can be moved. We're gonna handle the moving for you. And to show the user this can be moved, we're gonna add some styles. So node.style.cursor, we're gonna set it to grab. So this gets the grab hand. Actually, we're gonna use this action right now so I can show you what it's doing. To use the action, we're gonna have to import it. So import draggable from $lib slash dnd. So I place this in the lib folder, which means we can access it with the $lib shorthand. And the cards are gonna be grab grabable, so the list item of the cards ul will be using draggable. So we're gonna use draggable. So this should already work. We grab, have a grab hand and we can move the element around. Of course, we don't have the drop zone yet, and we're also gonna need to pass in some data so the drop zone knows what, it's, what we want it to happen. We're gonna handle the drag start event. So we're gonna create a function, handle drag start, which will take an e event, and then we're gonna, gonna set the data. We're gonna use the data transfer object, which is a thing that happens on drag events, and we can set some data to this drag event. And we're gonna have to define what type of data it is. I think only text is supported, so we're just gonna have text plain. And then the state from up here, we're gonna pass it in. So the drag action has the data we want attached. Now we just need to attach the data to the action and we're gonna want to do the card ID. Should be the data that gets passed here. All right, now we're gonna need to actually add the event listener. So we're gonna say event listener, and the drag start event is what we wanna listen to and then we're gonna handle the drag function. So this attaches our listener to this event. Next, we're gonna have to clean up because every time you add an event listener, you wanna think about if you want it leaving there forever and most times you don't. So we're gonna have to return an object and here we're gonna return a destroy function. And this is gonna basically just remove the event listener. Also, right now we have the issue that the data is set once. So if this variable changes for some reason, in this example it won't change, but it's a very important thing to think about. These props we're gonna pass in the function, they are part of this. 
object and right here we save them and I actually save them here because I want to update this state and we do that with the update function. So the update function gets called every time the props from the outside of the action change and it's gonna get the new data and here we just want to set the data to the state. So right here, it's always going to have the fresh data. So that's the first action done. You could do this like in a Svelte component too, but this is a clean way to have it portable and reusable in other components. So next, we're going to have the drop zone. Now the drop zone is going to be a bit more complicated, more stuff going on, but we can go step by step. Going to create a new function, drop zone. It's also going to take a node and options. And we're going to attach this to the columns. We're going to import this too. And then on each column, we're gonna use drop zone. We're gonna have a state again to make it updatable and gonna put in the options, but we also want some default options we can define here. So we need a drop effect, which is telling the browser what dropping here would do. So the browser can pick the appropriate cursor. We're gonna say move because we want to move this card to this column. Then I want to define a drag over class, something that gets attached to the drop zone when something is dropping over it. So I'm gonna call it droppable. And then the rest of the options, if we decide to overwrite this, we're gonna just spread them here. So if uh, we pass in a different drop effect or drag over class from outside, it's gonna be overwritten here. Let's first start with the drag over class and attaching it when something is dragging over. So we're gonna have a function called handle drag enter, which will handle the drag enter event. And basically we just want to add the drag over class to this target. So if we enter a drag, we're going to add this class, which is going to be the string to this target. And we're going to attach this listener, of course. Okay, so this should already work. Uh, okay, uh, we can't see it because we have this class here, but it's actually not doing anything. So we're going to have to define some styles for this class. So we want the column to be affected and we want the droppable class on it to work. But here's an issue we have. Uh, Svelte thinks this is an unused CSS selector because in the scope of this component Svelte doesn't know that outside we're gonna toggle this class. So to get around this just put this global modifier here and now Svelte it's not gonna bother checking this and it's just gonna add it. And right now we want some outline and we're gonna add some offset so it looks a bit nicer. And now it should work. When we drag this card over, this will show that this is a drop zone. But of course, we want to also remove the class again when we don't drop over it. So we're gonna add a new event listener for the drag leave event. Basically, we just take the same drag leave, gonna call it differently, and then we remove this class. And then again here, drag leave, and here handle drag leave. So now when we leave the box again, it's gonna stop it. But we have this weird behavior where if we hover something inside the list, it's gonna register a drag leaf event. So this is a weird thing we don't want. Basically what we want is everything inside the droppable to not emit pointer events. And we can do that with CSS using the same selector here, but we're gonna select every child. And then we're gonna set pointer events to none. And this way, we can just drag over and it's not going to care if we're hovering over children, just care about the droppable. So we got that working, but this is just visuals. This doesn't actually do anything. We just add some classes. Now let's actually try to get the drag and drop working. And before we can actually do stuff with the data, we need to tell the browser that this is actually a drop zone and is accepting something. So we're going to have to create a new function and drop, uh, handle drag over and we want to prevent the default. And then we're going to use the data transfer object again. And we have this drop effect. And like I said above, the drop effect, it just describes to the browser what the effect of dropping an item here would cause. So we want it to cause a moving. So we're going to use the state drop effect. So now the browser knows this actually has a drop effect. This does something. And this is important. Otherwise, the drag and drop won't work. Also, we're going to ha have this drag over event listener. Now we can go to the actual logic we need. So when we drop something, we actually want to react to it somehow. And we're gonna do that using the handle handle drop function. And the first thing we're gonna do is prevent the default. And then we're gonna get the data out of the data transfer object. And we here have to define again its text 
And also we want to remove the class again because when we drop something we don't want to tell anymore that it's a drop zone. And then for the last thing we're gonna call a callback function that is passed to the action. So we're gonna call the state and then on drop zone is what I call this function. Okay, so right now it's not gonna do anything because we don't pass in this, but we're gonna need it to create the logic for um, dropping a card. So we are going to use the drop zone, but we're also gonna have to pass in an on drop zone event. So down here we're gonna pass in the card ID as a prop for the draggable. So that's gonna be the data transfer object and right here we get the data transfer object out again. So we just have to handle the card being moved from one column to the other. So we have the card ID here, so we're gonna grab the card, we're gonna use the find function and we're gonna check if the ID of the current card we hold is the same as the card we want. So when we have the card we're gonna change the column to the current column ID. And then to tell Svelte something changed, we actually need to do this because uh, we are assigning to card.column, but it's not something actually used inside the template. But uh, since card is part of data, we can just say data equals data to tell Svelte, okay, data changed, please re render. And now it should work. It doesn't. <laughs> Okay, it actually didn't work because I didn't add the event listener, so we're gonna have to do that. For the drop event, we're gonna have to handle the drop event. So now it should work. Alright, and this is not complete yet. We are not cleaning up after ourselves, so we should do that. We're gonna return the destroy function again, where we're basically gonna take this whole thing and we're gonna change it to not add the event listener, but to remove it. So now if the DOM is updated, these things are not going to be hanging around, they're going to be destroyed. And also we want to react on option changes, so we're going to use the update function again. And basically we're going to reassign the state just like we have above. So now we have a pretty good action we can use for this. And now it's complete. So let's go over it one more time. The draggable function basically does four things. We prepare the node for dragging, we handle the drag start event by setting data to the data transfer object, and we return two functions, one to react to data changes and one to clean up after ourselves, so the event listener is going to be taken away if this node gets destroyed. And then we have the drop zone, we're going to handle the drag enter to add the class, handle the drag leave to remove the class, handle the drag over to tell the browser this actually has an effect when dropping, and then we handle the drop by getting the data out of the data transfer object, removing the class again, and then calling the callback function we passed into the action. We're gonna add the event listeners, and then we're gonna update our state again and destroy the event listeners. And here again, how we use it, use drop zone, and then we're gonna pass in an object on drop zone is a callback we defined. So here we're gonna get the data transfer data and we can do anything we want with it. This action doesn't care about how the data is structured. We can do anything we want and then here the use draggable is just gonna take in the data you want to attach to this drag event. And you can do different stuff with it. Actually this same action is used to create this drag and dropping reordering for the tabs inside Svelte Lab. So I have a different example. So this uh, pick up that can scene from Half-Life, I recreated it in Svelte. So you take it the can and put it in the trash and then you're all set. This basically works just, we have a boolean which says, is the can in the trash? And it starts with false and we're gonna tell the user to pick up that can. If the can is not in the trash, we have this image of the can and uh, the data we pass in is can, so we just identify that this is can. And then this trash image is a drop zone and if the data that gets dropped here is a can, we're gonna say can is in the trash. So this works basically the same. One important aspect around drag and drop is also the accessibility aspect. So drag and drop is not going to be a good choice for everything. Not everyone is going to be able to drag and drop with their mouse. So keyboard users, for example, aren't going to be able to drag and drop. And on mobile, it's not always a good interaction. So really think about adding alternative methods of interacting if you have a drag and drop list like this. 
I also have some thoughts about not publishing this as a library because this is not a lot of code. This is less than 100 lines of code. So I think it's easier for everyone if you just copy and paste this code snippet to your code base. That way we don't have to deal with the dependency overhead and you can customize the code for whatever works for you. If you want to enhance it further, like add styles to dragged items or drop zones having more logic on indicating whether they are valid drop zones or not, you can expand this whatever way you like. I hope you learned something today. Thank you for watching and see you soon.